answering our needs, are, and what I mean by our needs, I'm, I don't mean the next gadget, you know, but really, truly, like, like you know, our need for love, for, 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 uh, for, for good food, for quality time, um, for attention, you know, our, our, our deepest need, that this is actually a radical thought, but it is, it, it is, um, it has a potential to change the world, that it's not selfish, that we need, or, or at least we need that kind of selfishness. And I love that question that somebody asked yesterday to Raj about, um, uh, you know, where, where we, we have, we obviously are, you know, sinful creatures, right? We uh, greed and uh, gluttony and etc. And I, I love the way Raj said that, you know, he's, this is a typical morning for him. And it's a typical morning for all of us, but also acknowledging that we have also the capacity for all these other qualities. And I think that the more we take care of ourselves, like deeply, that more that we really start nurturing ourselves, the more we open up space in ourselves to actually um, nurture these qualities. Um, and, and, and then out of this nurturing, so much good can happen. It's that space I was talking earlier on to then start really being active in the community. But active, you know, good intentions, although like I believe in setting intention, like good intention, motivation, you know, like it often means nothing in terms of the result, you know. Um, I'm sure Monsanto justifies, you know, what they do, you know, because they want to do good or whatever. Like, you know, the history is, is, is plagued with um, <laughs> a good intention that haven't turned so good. So I think that it's important to like, you know, stay, stay just stay true to, to the process, because then it, it's it's harder uh, to get um, to get so far away from from our our our, um, our goals. Um, but again, like you know, like everything else, and, and this is definitely true. I'm sure um, when when you're you, when you're in industry where you're you have so many different pressure, you have your belief system that brought you where you are, but then you have all of these demands. Um, you know, to, to constantly ask that question to ourselves, you know, to make sure that we've not actually um, closed our eyes. Anyways, yes. I, I think that, that, that my perspective comes from, uh, you know, a, a lot of cynicism about political change. Um, you know, if you study a little bit the, the history of, of revolutions in, around the world, um, it's one group that takes power of, uh, from another group with great ideals and then starts, a, 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 you know, a hundreds or more years of oppression. And it's just like, well, really, like, is that, um, is that what I'm, what we, do we need a new wage of, a wave of, 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 of change that you know, is, is full of great intention, but basically we're using, and again, it's the same, we're using the same means, the same thinking, you know, like, are we really going anywhere? And I think that the only political group that has really truly inspired me over the years is, are the Zapatistas. And, and, you know, they've been crushed. Um, I don't think they're doing very much anymore. I don't know, but I might be wrong how much activities are still going on in the Chiapas, in Mexico. But the Zapatistas were truly a deeply democratic uh, a group that, um, that was looking to have deep, meaningful, cultural consciousness change. And I guess I feel that, that there, we feel that there is an urgency to change, right? I mean, we're facing, you know, global crisis, global warming is, is you know, it's ticking. You know, any day now, things can just really, I mean, it started, but it could hit the fan, you know, much faster. I mean, I feel that sense of urgency. And there is that sense of like, we, we got to start fighting these companies. I mean, gee, Salmon could enter the market tomorrow. Like, you know, there is this sense of like, there's urgency. But I think that the, even the urgency is just is just the same fear is like you know it just kind of you know kind of pushes it towards always the same the same outcome. I guess I believe that like you know change that's not going to really be changed, and we might as well just not. Like, I feel like the only really truly meaningful change is going to happen when we deeply change the way we think things, and when we allow for meaningful cultural con consciousness to shift. And our consciousness is not going to shift overnight. And we, you know, if, and it, it might mean that it doesn't happen in this, this world. You know, I don't know. But I guess I, I, this is maybe part of the faith, you know, this kind of surrender. Um, that, you know, but this is the only change that I, I think might last, might be meaningful, might actually make change that we really want to see. Like, you know, what I talked about, the parenting project that I'm thinking is because the idea that the only way to step into a different world is actually to teach children outside of the power struggle, outside of conflict that are uh, the result of, of, 
power difference and power hugging. Because we're stuck in this. We're stuck in, in um, you know, this, this paradigm. Um, so, you know, and then I, I'll go back to what I said before. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid when we act out of fear and out of habit, out of self-protection, that we go more towards what Raj was talking about, fascism and, you know, protectionism, you know, all the, in the wrong direction, you know, with, I guess, you know, the, I think that we, we need to be uh, organizing politically. I certainly see a lot of changes that need to happen politically, but I think that they need to happen out of heart openness, you know, or, or heart opening. And I think that the more you take care of yourself, the more you have space to really act in the community. I think that people, um, People that, that, that really truly take care of themselves, um, that seem to have taken their place, that, that they, they're not passive in their community. They actually se seem to move mountains. I mean, the example, the best example are probably Gandhi, you know, Martha Luther King, you know, people that were uh, in this uh, nonviolence mindset, mindset that were talking about deep, deep, deep consciousness shift, and yet they were fighting. Um, fighting the system directly, they were engaged in the system. So I, I, I don't see it as a contradiction, but I also feel like, you know, you got to start where you are first. And, and uh, too much of, too many of us have, have a lot of healing to do in our personal lives. And again, like you guys are already so far ahead from most people. Um, when I talk to, to, when I do Q and A's, usually folks are, are feeling stuck in their job. They don't feel like they have a choice to, you know, do the work that would be more meaningful to them. They feel stuck in their, uh, lifestyle, you know, they have children, they have to pay for school. Um, we recently ran into um, this man that I know, um, this acquaintance in New York City, and he was um, sending his school to a private school because he wanted them to have a certain cultural experience um, that this school was provided. Because of that, both him and his wife were working, you know, paying jobs and feeling really stressed. And I remember saying to him, but you know, you, you, you know, you don't, you really don't need that for, you know, like in terms of what cultural experience you want his kids to have, it was so easy to think of a solution, but he felt so stuck. Most people are in this kind of golden prison when they feel completely stuck. I feel like before we can move to meaningful political change, you know, they, they need to, we need to um, uh, let go of a lot of our fears. Um, and, and again, like allow solutions to present themselves to us. Um, you know, I mean, but I don't know. I might be completely wrong. I, you know, I don't know. Like water, the path of least resistance. Um, I don't know. Um, I, well, first of all, I'm, I'm really interested in your bank. I know that um, I, you know, my, my money, um, the little bit that I have, but, you know, the, the fresh actually, you know, even though we do make no profit almost, we do have quite a bit of, of income coming in on a monthly basis. Uh, we just spend it right away. But, you know, we, we bank with Citibank. I don't like it, you know. Uh, but I don't, I didn't find any alternatives. I mean, maybe I didn't search well enough. Um, I know that uh, Ross Kramer was the um, president of the Missouri Farmer Union. And um, I thought that that was genius, right? But I didn't, you know, uh, the ideas of, so I would love to hear more about your bank and also like start, maybe I can start sharing that information with my, you know. You know, we always think of investor, we need Gates, and you know, Gates is not doing good work, you know, uh, in terms of his billion dollar is going towards Monsanto kind of solution, like again, the old mindset. Um, so, you know, I think that, that all of our little savings together um, could make an incredible difference in terms of where, where, you know, funding the kind of change that we want to see happen. Uh, community banking, I guess, in some ways. So, yeah, I agree there should be more solution, but first people have to even think about this. I don't think that most of us, again, you know, things have to come up to our, in our consciousness. So, like, um, I became, I even started thinking about this only when um, I met with, um, what was, what's her name, the woman that started the white, white dog, uh, you know, the, the Philadelphia restaurant? What's her name? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, I can't hear, but, yeah, so, so the, the white dog cafe and, and whatever her name is, she started, like, this, this huge, um, she, Bali. Okay, anyways, it's really amazing stuff. And, um, it, but it made me think about, about the fact that, and it, I, you know, I, I think of the bank as just this convenient thing where I put my money and I can retrieve it. You know, it's not like I invest money. So, you know, I never really thought, wow, what am I really funding? How come I can't get to put money someplace, 
safe where I can also fund um, the kind of uh, uh, local revitalization program that I would want to see. Um, so I think we need to make that just part of the consciousness to start with, the way like sustainability has become more part of our consciousness, the same way we need to think of, you know, we need to change banking. And I think this is a way we'll have a lot of investment towards um, the kind of program that we want to see. In terms of, oh, go ahead. Institution like yours and more of them would be a way to fund. Um, I know that the Missouri Farmers Union has been able to raise money from investment all the way to for, in New York to fund projects in Missouri uh, that are helpful. Um, you know, I think that there is a lot of potential. Um, you know, we, we the carbon trading is not really happening in the U.S. yet. Um, but, you know, there might be a way, uh, uh, they're developing a way to really measure how much carbon is being sequestered uh, through farming. And this could be a way to actually fund uh, farmers, um, to actually give them, a, you know, through carbon credit kind of trading. And even if it's not in the U.S. market, it could be in the international market because it is happening in other places in the world. So, you know, potentially there would be a way to fund these farmers through carbon trading. If we can actually measure fairly well, then there would be incentives for these farmers to move to no-tilling or to uh, this kind of rotational grazing uh, system um, because they would be earning money uh, by sequestering carbon. Uh, clearly, the government, uh, in order to meet the Kyoto Accord, could start um, subsidizing farmers to tra transform their operation towards more um, uh, carbon sequestration uh, methods since we know which ones are really working and sequestering the most carbon. So, you know, the government could certainly have a role. But, I mean, I think you're right. Like, we need... You know, um, I, you know I, I, I don't know that I, I can answer your question beyond that. Like, I don't know that, that um, you know, there is more and more investors that are, you know, you, you know slow money, you know, it's trying to be, this guy has been trying to raise money, investors' money towards uh, a local food economy. I don't know how far, uh, they, you know, they are, how much money they've raised so far. Um, but I tend to believe that it might be the small, small little amount of money, but put together that might make the big difference. In the Minneapolis region, there is a not-for-profit that is uh, um, guaranteeing a certain uh, uh, price for farmers to just use a very small part of their land and transition it to, uh, um, n n you know, to, to not traditional crops, to so like, you know, kind of organic and, and uh, um, more food and vegetables rather than corn and soy. And so um, by guaranteeing the price of what they would have made for that acreage um, uh, with the corn and the soy, it, they make it easy for these farmers to transition, and often what these farmers are seeing then is that they can access a market, that they're making more money, that they're enjoying the work better, and then um, they're hoping to then increase you know, the, the amount of land that becomes transition to, to uh, uh, not corn and soy conventional farming. Uh, so that's one way of doing it, which requires money as well. Um, and then th somebody like uh, um, uh, the... the um, David Ball, uh, the supermarket owner, um, because there is such a demand for this product, he actually uh, builds this relationship with farmers, and at the beginning of the season, he really gives them money in advance in order to be able to plant more. So for sure, um, you know, the, the, the businesses uh, that are uh, trying to meet this increasing demand uh, for these food uh, are going to, you know, slowly, slowly are putting more money. Uh, the thing is that they're always trying to cut cut down, like they're trying to get it cheaper and, and to make it more like the way they, they've used to those things. But, um, you know, I think that businesses and then, you know, again, like government incentives. And I think like the, the farmers are not risk takers and um, most of them now are above 60. So it's hard to ask them to carry that burden of transitioning to something completely different that usually requires a lot more labor. Um, they're not making money. Uh, industrial farms are not making money, but they can do it on their own at age 60 or more. Um, and they are guaranteed, um, you know, not guaranteed, but like they usually can keep this cycle of, 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 of uh, debts, but at least they can keep their land. Um, you know, asking them to transition to something else is incredibly risky. Um, so we do need, um, we need to have um, real monetary incentive for them to do that. Uh, but also what we're seeing is more and more young people coming to the land, mission driven. Um, so willing to take the risk and young enough to be able to do that. And so then it's about giving, giving them access to the land, and we all know that that's a big issue too. So, I mean, there's a lot, of, a lot of hurdles. I don't know what time is it. Are we done? Okay.